Western blotting is a technique used to identify and locate proteins based on their ability to bind to specific antibodies. Cells and tissues need to be lysed to release the proteins of interest. Mm. Preparation of the lysate from the tissues is done by addition of phosphate buffer. Centrifuge 20 minutes at 12,000 rpm at 4 degrees Celsius in a micro centrifuge. Remove the tubes from the centrifuge and place on ice. Discard the pellet. Determine the protein concentration by Bradford or Lowry assay. Electrophoresis can be one dimensional or two dimensional. SDS page technique is a standard means for separating proteins according to their molecular weight. The separation of molecules within a gel is determined by the relative size of the pores formed within the gel. The proteins in the tested solution are separated into distinct bands by SDS page. The gel should be soaked in transfer buffer for 10 minutes. A nitrocellulose membrane approximately the size of the gel must be pre-soaked in western transfer buffer for 5 minutes. The membrane should be handled with gloves and clean forceps to avoid contamination with extraneous proteins. Air bubbles are formed between the gel and the membrane which creates hole in the transfer. This can be prevented by rolling a pipette over the sandwich. Sandwich the gel and the membrane between paper and assemble the sandwich in a dish of transfer buffer. Immunoblotting combines the superior resolving power of SDS polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis with a highly sensitive antibody binding assay to find a specific protein in a mixture of different proteins. Proteins are first separated on a polyacrylamide gel. Then in the blotting step, the proteins are transferred onto a nitrocellulose membrane. The gel containing the separated proteins is placed on the membrane. Protein transfer is done by electrophoresis. In the electrical field generated by the power supply, proteins coated with negatively charged SDS migrate towards the positive electrode. After the proteins migrate out of the gel, they are captured by the nitrocellulose membrane as the membrane binds any protein that comes into contact. The proteins stick to the membrane in the same position as they were in the gel. Thus, the membrane is a blot of the gel. The gel is then discarded and inert proteins such as serum albumin is then used to coat the membrane so that no other proteins will stick to it. A primary antibody is chosen to specifically bind to the protein of interest. The red one here is the protein. Albumin prevents the antibody from sticking to the membrane. <laughs> 
After the washing step, only the primary antibody bound to the red protein remains. Several methods are used to detect the antibody labeled protein. Most used is addition of a secondary antibody which binds specifically to the FC domain of the primary antibody. In another approach, a secondary antibody is linked to an enzyme so that its location can be determined by a chromogenic reaction. After a washing step, only the primary antibody bound to the red protein remains. Several methods are used to detect the antibody labeled proteins. The enzyme cleaves the substrate to produce a colored product that precipitates onto the membrane near the antibody. Western blotting allows one to visualize antibodies directed against each viral protein. For this reason, it is a confirmatory test for a positive HIV ELISA. In an HIV Western blotting, proteins are electrophoresed into a gel. As the proteins migrate through the gel, they are separated based upon size and charge. Characteristically, smaller proteins migrate through the gel faster than the larger proteins.